The lumber industry in Madagascar is low-tech. There are no machines. Elbow grease does the work. In Majunga, on the northwest coast, all the lumbermen are Zafimanari, recognized and appreciated for their woodworking skills. These carpenters, joiners, and cabinet makers were driven from the coast nearly three centuries ago by rivals and took refuge in the island's central highlands. Money is scarce among the Zafimanari. Many young men resort to seasonal immigration. Desiree and Ralai left their mountains for a season of sawing. This evening, they're loading the last truck of the season. The two men are worn out. They can't wait to go home. The lumbermen are paid at the end of each month. The boss deducts advances, which are not much. The Zafimanari don't need much money to live. Most often, they sleep on the worksite. For their last month's work, Ralai and Desiree each receive 200,000 arrieres, about 80 euros. After working for three months, each one returns to his village with 200 euros. The national road number seven that crosses the island from north to south is in good condition but it still takes the minibus two or three days to reach Antwetch, the last stop, 800 kilometers away. It's hard to imagine that not so long ago, this road went through a primary forest filled with exceptional plants and animals that no longer exist. The deforestation of Madagascar is one of the most disturbing in the tropics. Antwetch is a city of a thousand people perched at an altitude of 1,300 meters. This is the gateway to the Zafimanari's land and the administrative center for some 50 villages, which are only accessible on foot via steep and sometimes dangerous paths. It's late. Ralai and Desiree will spend the night in Antwetch, sleeping in a shop where the craftsmen sell their work. Dadamungji, Ralai's uncle, is already there. Razafi, who runs the shop, is worried. The large pieces are not selling. Ralai has had a wood chest for three years. It's magnificent, but no one's buying it. <laughs> the art of the Zafimanari was unknown until the 1960s. The anthropologists who studied these little known people discovered an astonishing woodcrafting culture. The Zafimanari translate the principles that guide their lives into poetic, extremely subtle geometric patterns. Dadamunji suggests creating an association that would determine prices. Everyone listens to the jovial 72-year-old as he went to school attentive to others, interested in everything, tireless despite his age, Dadamunji is fully committed to supporting the community. Mm. 
شوف انتوما راح واش صحيت اه In the morning, Desiree, Ralai, and Dada Munji separate at the stone monument built to honor the ancients. Veluma! Desiree heads north. He will join his father and two younger brothers who are working in the forest. As for Ralai and Dada Munji, they return to the village of Kitodo. The forest once covered all the land they're crossing. Ten times, people had burned the mountain to plant corn. Today, the land is sterile. Just before Kitodo, the women are working in the fields. Dada Munji immediately starts in on his campaign. He wants to convince the villagers that burning the mountain destroys the land and leads to famine. Ma <laughs> Chatia ti hotinyamni amfamak na nyendunga na de aveu manduru fa alam na lam na lam na vomhaju ba toera na vulena ni niala tiash kwa pana ato sumbona mora osa de tanninga na hana Kitodo is a typical Zafimanari village Sitting on a rocky outcrop between two steep valleys, it's not as isolated as many others. The few dozen houses in Kitodo are in perfect condition because the 300 inhabitants of the village maintain the culture of their people against all odds. Ralai's children haven't seen their father for three months, yet they don't fling their arms around him. To the foreigner, surprised at such restraint, the Zafimanaries say that physical displays are not part of their customs. Ralai's wife is not here. She's ill and in bed at her parents' house in a nearby village. Ralai's sister-in-law is taking care of the children. Her husband is still in Majunga. Dada Munji is worried about her. He asks her if she's not afraid that he'll meet another woman. No, I'm not afraid. I am the first wife. But if he brings another woman here, if he brings her into the house, I wouldn't stand for it. I would go home to my parents or go live somewhere else. The men are gathered in Chief Rayaman's home to decide on the construction of a new house. The village hasn't experienced such an event in 20 years. A Zafamanari house lasts at least a century.
Di fal vingi am di syarahnya sesa mana wuna? Tena fal ya. Ah, tena fal. Jauh zan ya. Ah, iya. Anu zan bula keli nawa. Kanefa happy narna an lejawat. Satia refang alufangi dia ngarun rezan nuhandi mian le asa. Tena fal. Nanti berusaha lewat. Ini lah bu. Ah. Lafaf apa? Tadi lugu dia cara karan yang arah tay. Kui cara karan yang arah tay rasili. Orang mentuas ku. Tiye, siapa tahu cara karana? Un fakuka, un piasa, un tanana. Di mama Franwas itu sok tara. The Zafimanuri have been Christians for nearly a century, yet they've not given up the traditions that underpin their identity. The future owner of the house sacrifices a zebu to placate the spirits of the ancestors so that they intercede with God for the construction to be successful. The sacrifice is a ritual celebration. It's also a social gesture. Mazebu is shared among all the families in the village. An offering of meat is certainly reason for a feast, because they don't eat it every day. But it's also a sign of recognition and respect. If a resident didn't receive his share, he would feel insulted, his very existence denied. <laughs> For us, the Zafamaniri, to make a house, we need the forest. But the forest is starting to disappear. We have burned too much. What is going to happen to the future generations? 